Good morning friends, my name's Ted and it's great to join you here for morning prayers at Holy Trinity Anglican Church in Brisbane's Fortitude Valley. The night has passed and the day lies open before us, so before we do anything else, let's pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence as revealed in your word, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. If you haven't done today's readings yet, now is an excellent time to do so. Go on, take all the time you need. We'll be here when you get back. Our memory verse for today comes from our second lesson, Philippians chapter 1, verse 21. For to me, life is the Messiah, and death is gain. Let's pray. We consecrate this day to your service, O Lord. May all our thoughts, words and actions be well-pleasing to you and serve the good of our brothers and sisters through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. One of the very first criticisms made against Christians was the accusation that we are a death cult. It is not difficult to see why the pagan world would see such a thing we worship a crucified God and eat his flesh and drink his blood. We carry on in this life the best we can, yet we look forward with hopeful expectation to the day we die. Our great apostle to the Gentiles, St Paul, even said explicitly that to die is gain. Yet all of us, Christian or otherwise, live in the shadow of death. Every worldview, religion and philosophy struggles with the inevitability of death. Some people try to ignore it. Mostly they try to find a way to use it to their advantage. The Buddhist tries to die physically while remaining morally alive. The Enlightenment philosopher tries to die morally in their ego death while remaining physically alive. The bland materialist, for whom consumption is synonymous with life, tries to use death as an encouragement to consume as much as possible before their time is up. And we need not speak any more about abortion, other than the fact that it is nothing less than child sacrifice to demons in exchange for a good crop. But one man came back from the dead. One man did what everyone else does, dies, but then he returned to this life. The empty tomb changes everything. Suddenly we have a new way of seeing death, a disgusting inevitability transformed into the gateway to eternal life for those who trust the one and only man who came back. No wonder St. Paul speaks the way he does. Because of the empty tomb, he knows that to die is gain. But he also knows that on a fundamental level, it is all because of the beauty of life. And so he resolves to keep going in this life because to do so means to encourage more people in their journey towards eternal life. And once we pass over into the eternal side, more glory is added to the Messiah, who has saved us, who is our life, and has made death to be our gain. Let's pray. Eternal God and Father, by whose power we are created and by whose love we are redeemed, guide and strengthen us by your Spirit, that we may give ourselves to your service and live this day in love to one another and to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thanks for joining me again today, friends. We'll see you tomorrow. May the God of steadfastness and encouragement grant us to live in such harmony with one another in accord with Christ Jesus that we may with one voice glorify our God and Father. Amen.